Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, guys. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. We are, if you're just hopping in here and you don't know what I'm doing, just scroll back through my Facebook page and you'll catch up. We're doing the Attributes of God by the thedailygraceco.com. Go to thedailygraceco.com and get you some really awesome devotionals there. You don't have to necessarily get this one. They have a bunch, y'all. They have a whole lot, and they always do $5 and $10 sales. I always say that because, y'all, I think it's just amazing. There's something in my hair, I feel like. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> I dare this. I'm, like, looking at myself. Um, anyways, it's such a good devotion. And so we've done two days, and we are on day three of the first week, and it's Talk About Knowing God. And it's important to know who he is, right? If it shapes everything. We are learning. If we don't know God, um, our view of the world, the way we act, the things that we do is, um, is so skewed. It's so different. And, and when you come to know who God actually is, right, it changes everything. It changes your view of everything, your actions, everything that you do is changed by the knowledge of knowing who God is, right? So we have been praying, and I've been praying for transformation. Transformation, not just a head knowledge of who God is, but a transforming of my entire self, right? Down into my heart, the way I act, the way I talk, how I treat people, how I um, just conduct my life on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that it is transformative in my life. And the more we dig in and sincerely want to know who God is and chase after relationship with Him, He does. It is transforming. It will absolutely, one hundred percent, it will transform who you are day by day. And that's a walk with God. It's a relationship with Him. So, anyway, so today is knowing God. If you're on here live, give me a hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag two. And I'm going to jump in here because it's so good today. Knowing God, knowing God, um, we got to know in Philippians. So the key verse scripture here today is Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. And this is Paul speaking to the Philippians, the people at Philippi, right? And it's two, actually, if you read the very first, um, in the first chapter, the first verse, he's, he's talking to all the saints, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi. So he is talking to the saints here, but he's he's talking about knowing Christ. And so in chapter 3, verse 7 through, I'm going to actually read through 11 because that finishes off the sentence. <laughs> so um, anyway, he says, but everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. Listen to this. It's so good. And he says, more than that. I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Do you, let, me, let, me just, let me just say that again. I'm going to start over because I don't want you to miss any of this. But everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and considered them as dung so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Let me stop right there. He said, I consider, he said, I consider it as dunk, as a waste. Like everything that I have gained in my life absolutely means nothing. I can like I can lose it all just so I have Christ and I can be found in him. Take it all away. Give me Jesus. How many of us can honestly say that? Lord, I could lose everything, everything, right? And, but God, as long as I have you, and he's talking about really is dying to yourself and your own agenda and your own things, right? 
He said, I just consider it as dung, as waste, so that I may gain Christ. And then he says, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own. He's saying it's not by me obeying the law. It's not by me doing all the things I know that I'm supposed to do according to the Mosaic law, right? The law that they had to follow. He said, no, it's not my own righteousness. But it's the one that is through faith in Christ. My righteousness from God based on faith. The righteousness from God. Wow. And then in verse 10, he goes on to say this. So good. We're going to learn his goal. Paul's goal right here. He said, my goal. My goal is to know him. That's why we're doing the study, right? Because we want to know God. We want to know him. And Paul said that's his goal too. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Let me say those things again before I finished, finish the sentence. He said my goal is to know him and the power of of his resurrection. See, sometimes we just want to know God, but we don't want to we don't want to know the power of his resurrection, nor do we want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. What suffer? No, not me. Checking out right now. Like God doesn't want me to suffer. You better read your Bible. <laughs> you better read your Bible. But don't let that scare you because it's all good, y'all. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. What we think is good is really not good at all in God's eyes. He has something so much better for us. And if we could ever grasp that, that all all of our desires need to die, right? Because when we say yes to Jesus, we say yes to his will. We say yes to his way. It's no longer what Emily wants. It's no longer Emily's agenda because that's pride, We have put ourselves up on a pedestal and we want everything for us. Only if it's convenient for us. Only if it's comfortable for us. Only if it looks good for us. And we've got all these things that swirl around in our own minds and and what we want to do. But we don't ever want to lay them down and surrender. All of those things. All of our dreams. All of our our ambitions. Right? Because they're selfish. Because it's all for us, and we have to lay that down and crucify it to the cross with Christ, right? For To pick up His will and His way in our lives. Because it's so much better than we could ever, ever even imagine, ask, think, or dream. It's so much better, y'all. So much better. Let me finish that sentence. <laughs> he says, my goal is to know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. Being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. Wow. New. What is resurrection? New life. We're alive in Christ, right? In him. In him. And Paul is saying that right there like, man, my goal is to know him and and everything else be stripped away. And I mean, if that causes me pain, I'm going to be in fellowship with his sufferings. He had to suffer. Jesus had to die on a cross, right? Every part of his flesh was done. And then there was life. (laughs) That ought to make somebody excited. Y'all, even though it's suffering and And it hurts in the moment, right? Our flesh hurts in the moment. That's a real thing, right? It really happens. But man, there is just something when we lay ourselves down, when we just give ourselves totally to God, no matter what it's going to look like for us, no matter how people are going to view us, what people are going to say, that doesn't even matter anymore because my goal is to know Jesus. My goal is to know Christ and become more like him. And that means I've got to lose myself. I've got to die to this flesh. No longer what I want. Pride has to go. It has to leave, right? It's got to go. It's got to go to be more like him. So we're talking about knowing who God is. And I love that Paul says this right here because it's true for us. 
We have to. We've got to we've got to kill the pride. We have to get that out of our lives and pray and ask God. I ask God all the time, almost daily, God, remove the pride out of my life. Keep me humble. Help me to know who I am in you, to know you and who I am in you. That it's not about me, but it's all about you, right? Okay. <laughs> Into the devotion here. <laughs> so it says, what does it mean to know God? What does it mean to know God? Knowing God has become a bit of a cliche in Christian culture. And many people talk about knowing him. But how many of us can truly say that we know him deeply and intimately? How many of us can actually say that? Our goal in this study is to get past the cliches when it comes to talking about who God is and knowing him. And instead, we want to know God. We want to truly, deeply, and intimately know him. Don't you want to know him truly and intimately, deeply know who God is? I do. I do. Because knowing God and glorifying him is what we were created for. We're going to worship something. And I know some people don't like to hear that. Because you're like, well, no, I don't worship anything. Yes, you do. We were all created to worship. <laughs> we were all created to worship and we all worship something. What is it that you worship? I hope it's God and not just all of these things down here on earth, but that, that, that our eyes are focused and fixed on Jesus, right? Man, many people know about God, whether believers or unbelievers, right? But knowing God is so much more than knowing about Him. Knowing God is more than an academic knowledge of what the Bible says. We can be theologians who know all the right answers without knowing God deeply. Did you know that? You can do that. You can do all the Bible study quizzes, Bible quizzes, and, and, and all the competitions, and be able to quote scripture left and right, know the people in the Bible, and still not have an intimate relationship with God. You can. You can. This truth should be a wake-up call for every person who loves theology and studying God's Word. Theology is not the enemy. It's not the enemy. When viewed or studied correctly, theology should only encourage a greater love and affection for Christ. If you're in it just for intellectual knowledge, so you know how to spit out an answer at somebody who says, you know, well, that's not in the Bible or something like that, you know. If that's your only goal in that, you're missing the point. You're, miss, you're missing the real true message of the gospel, right? Um, it says, but if theology is divorced from the intimate knowledge of God, we have a problem. We have a problem, guys. If it's just a check-off list, if you're just saying, okay, well, I read the scripture for the day. I did my duty check. Now I can go on about my day. You're missing it. We're missing that, that deeply, intimately knowing Christ, knowing God, knowing who he is. We're missing that, the relationship part, right? If we're just going through the motions and checking off the box, we're missing, we're missing the relationship part, okay? Knowing God is, not, is also not just an experience. It's not just an experience. It's not um, an emotional high or a spiritual event. That that's all you're wanting is just, oh, let me go feel good for a moment, but never know anything about God. But let me have some chill bumps and let me cry for a minute and, um, and know that God is near, but never talk to him. It's not that either. <laughs> it's not that either, right? Instead, it's a relationship that is built little by little over time. Over time, it's a lifestyle. When we give our lives to God, it's, it's a daily walk. It's a daily lifestyle that we're laying down ourselves, picking up that cross, right? Crucifying this flesh and chasing after a real relationship with Christ. It takes intentionality on our part, right? We have to be intentional because it ain't just going to fall into our laps. 
We got to we got to make it happen. <laughs> we got to do it, right? In Philippians chapter 3, Paul speaks about knowing Christ. He says that he counts everything as loss compared to knowing Christ. To Paul as it should be to all disciples, knowing Christ was one of the utmost was um utmost importance. So important, right? Everything else in life pales in comparison. Can we truly say that we would rather know Christ and lose everything than have all the things that this world offers but not know Jesus? That's tough. And someone said, hey, I can give you everything. All the money you want, all the fame you want, all the things you want, the biggest house, nicest car, best clothes, um, best job, whatever. All the things, but you'll never know Jesus. Could we, could we give it up? Could we give that up? And say, no, I'd rather know who God is. <laughs> because, y'all, his ways are better. <laughs> All those things are enticing. That's what the enemy does. He wants to just dangle them in front of us. Like, hey, you just have all this. Just don't worry about reading your Bible today. you got all these other things to do. And you have a, your goals to chase. And you don't have time to read the Bible. You don't have time to pray today. God will understand. Got to be careful. We got to be careful. That's how the enemy comes right in, right? In, right? Man, Paul says that knowing Christ is of surpassing value. There is nothing that compares to knowing him. You can't put a price on it. There's nothing. Take away everything. But if I know who he is, that's all I need. That's all I need, right? Knowing God makes our hearts passionate about the mission of God. As we know God more, our hearts align with his heart. And our greatest desire becomes to live with our lives as an offering for his service. To live as an offering means to give ourselves up to God so that he can do his will with us. Right? Dying to our will. Becoming more like Christ. Getting in alignment with his will for our life. Right? Furthermore, knowing him gives fuel to our faith. And propels us to action. And when we truly know God, it is manifested in our obedience to God. Man, when you know Him, you want to obey Him. You want to do everything He asks you to do because you just know how great He is. Right? 1 John 2 and 4 reminds us that we are liars if we say that we know Him, but we do not do what He says. It's like, if you don't obey me, then you don't know me at all. You're a liar. <laughs> wow. Sounds harsh, but it's the truth. It's a tough one to swallow, ain't it? Our obedience to the God we know and love demonstrates true faith and true knowledge of God. Wow. Knowing God also changes the way we think about God, Scripture, our lives, and the world around us. Changes everything. It teaches us to interpret our lives and the world around us in light of what we know to be true about God. It's a whole different interpretation. <laughs> a whole different one. You won't be so quick to let people just speak things over you or tell you what you are and you aren't. You aren't. You just won't. It'll just fall off. Like, that's okay. It's okay. I love you. I realize you don't understand what you're saying. But I trust in God and I know what he said about me. I know what he's called me to do. That's the difference, guys. Instead of getting mad and yin yin back and let me give you, let me just give you a piece of my mind. No. You love him. You love him anyway and you pray, right? Because you know who you are in Christ. You know your relationship with the Lord because it's a relationship and it's not religion. It's not just a check the box, right? We are often tempted to change our view of who God is based on our experience. But knowing God changes our perspective. Changes our perspective. It sets our perspective in line with his perspective. So when tragedy comes and heartache comes, hard times, storms of this life, because they're coming, they come on us all. Christian or non-Christian, you have storms. But the difference is how we view them. Man, it changes everything, y'all. 
our perspective on all the storms and all the things that come into our lives is different than the non-believer where they have no hope and they don't understand and confused. And I'm not saying as a Christian, we're not confused at times and we don't understand at times because Lord knows that happens too. But we have a hope that either we can't understand it and we don't get it. Our hope is in Christ and we cling and we hold on to that right. And it brings us peace and joy knowing that God is in control. He's still in control. And he still loves us and he is so good. And he is still gracious and he is still merciful. He is still loving. And we know that by reading and by praying and knowing him more and more, right? So when those things come, when those storms hit us, man, we're standing on a sure foundation, that we know who God is no matter what comes our way, right? Knowing God is reflected in our contentment with the life that God has given to us, right? Was it Paul, I'm sure, that said, you know, I've learned to live with a lot and I've learned to live with nothing. And all of it, because he's got Christ. It's like, so if I have a lot or I have nothing, it's okay. I've learned to be content with it because I have Jesus. Discontentment is, at its root, an accusation against God's character. Did you know that? Discontentment is, at its root, an accusation against God's character. Discontentment says that God has not given us all that we need. You're sitting there saying, I don't have everything I need. When God's saying, yes, you do. If you've got me, if you've got me, you got to listen. Do our, our own selfish desires, our own wills get us in places that we shouldn't be? Absolutely. And then we find out that we have to use our own strength, our own will to try to stay in that place of, that we put ourselves in. We don't want to hear that either. Because <laughs> it hurts. Because <laughs> we've messed up. We didn't listen to God. And now we need him to help us. And you know what? He's so gracious and kind. He will. He will. He's so loving and forgiving that all we have to do is call on him and he will help us. Do we reap what we sow? Yes, absolutely. Well, that causes us to maybe have to stay in that season for a little bit so we learn our lesson real good. Yeah, that happens too. <laughs> but God is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Keep your eyes on him and trust in him, right? says, but when we truly know the goodness of God, we will not doubt his sovereign will in our life circumstances. We will not doubt him. We will not doubt him. Knowing God means that we have a place to run when life does not make sense. Ooh, that happens to us all, right? It means that we have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Nothing in this life is more important than knowing, than knowing and being known by God. Nothing, nothing in this life is more important than that. Your best friend is not going to know you like God knows you. Your spouse does not know you like God knows you. I know you want them to. I, I know that you want them to have everything about you figured out and do all the right things, but they're not God and they never will be. They will always have flaws. We will always make mistakes. We are not God. And you know what? God is jealous and he will not allow anybody, not your, not your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your mama, your daddy, your best friend, your children, will not take his place. <laughs> so let it go. <laughs> we all make mistakes, right? Man, we're not God. Only one, only one. And there's nothing more important than God, knowing him, right, and being known by him. So as we prepare to look closely at the attributes and the character of God, may it be our great desire to go beyond knowing about God and grow in knowing him more deeply. Lord, I, I pray that we just get off of this surface level of knowing you. Lord, I ask that you would stir our hearts, stir a hunger in us, Father, like we have never had before, a desire to know you 
Lord, that we would lay down all of our fleshly desires, all of our self, Lord, our own agendas, our own, own selfish ambitions, Father, Lord, that we would lay them all at your feet, God, because we don't know what's best for us. We don't truly know what is lying ahead. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what next year holds, God. We don't know what the next second holds in our life, Lord. But God, you know it all. You are all knowing. You are all knowing, God. You see everything. And Lord, help us. Help us to humble ourselves. Remove the pride out of our lives, Lord, that we are surrendered 100% totally unto you, to knowing you, knowing you deeper than just one scripture a day or or just or just a fly by the seat of our pants prayer, God, that, that, that God, that we're giving you our 100%. We're giving you our devotion. Our attention is on you, God, and we want to know you better. Transform us. Touch our minds. Renew it, Father. Give us clean hands and a pure heart before you, Lord. We need you in this hour. We need you every moment of every day. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that everything flows from you. All wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding, everything flows from you, Lord. And all we have to do is ask. All we have to do is ask you for it, Lord. I thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. The questions are posted on here. Look at them, really think about that, think about these questions. What's the difference between just knowing God and knowing about God, knowing about Him and really knowing Him, right? What did you learn about, where did you learn from today's lesson about knowing God, the impact that it happens happens to you? And then write out your prayer or pray. Spend some time praying and asking God to help you dig deeper in his word and to know him more than you've ever known him before. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I will see y'all right here tomorrow on the EMJ Daily. Bye, guys.